I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do a small subtle yarn dyeing experiment that I've been wanting to try for a while. Today we are going to compare and contrast the awesome Wool to Dye For Donegal White Nap Yarn to Knit Pick Stroll and see if we dye them both at the same depth of shade, so using the exact same amount of dye, how do the final colors compare to one another? Now Knit Pick Stroll, which is probably the yarn base I have dyed more of than any other, is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. The fiber content of the white Nep Donegal base is a little bit different. It is 84% superwash merino, 16% cotton acrylic neps. And this white fiber that is sort of spun with slubs to give those little neps throughout uh, the yarn is white. And the yarn I've dyed in this base so far has felt heathered. It's felt like you could see the almost the difference between the wool and that cotton acrylic fiber throughout, which sort of reduces the total saturation feel on the yarn. So my thought is that by comparing these two yarn bases at similar or at the same depth of shade using one dye color, we can see visually how much of an impact that 16% of that cotton acrylic in the fiber content makes. Because cotton and acrylic can't be dyed with acid dyes, but nylon can. And so I expect that the results today will be rather subtle, but this is honestly something I've been really curious about. And it's really fun to compare different fiber types. So please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss new videos. And well, let's go get started. I pre-soaked both skeins of yarn in some plain tap water for days. <laughs> it's been days. I wanted to do this project last week, but a uh, bit of a wrist injury sort of held me up. So things have pre-soaked a lot longer than normal, but we know that our fiber is super, super well saturated. <laughs> I have a dye stock of Dharma Dark Navy that is a couple months old. It is now the beginning of September. And an older dye stock can potentially have some particulates. It's not necessarily as accurate as it may have been when we first mixed. So to remedy that, I am going to measure out 200 grams of the acid dye, add it to this beaker right here fill it up to get 500 milliliters total of volume and then divide this in half so we have 250 milliliters in each situation so that way we know that the dye we're using is more consistent. All right I am heating up my tap water um, and I am now going to measure out I think 300 if I have that much all right, just shy <laughs> of 300 milliliters of our 1% stock of Dharma Dark Navy. Now it is possible because I'm not sure how much I use the stock that things could be more or less consistent. I just added the hot water to the bottle whoop, to rinse things out and hopefully to not make a mess. Uh, so that way we can stir things up and make sure if there's any particulates that they're really well distributed. And so this is helping because if there were a lot of particulates and we had it in a smaller volume of water, then there is a chance that we could have, especially dealing with the ends of a stock solution, we could have had more of the color in one sample than the other, which would skew our results. But now we have things fairly consistent. We have, yes, we have 500 milliliters total. And now it's well stirred up. And now I have it divided into two different 250 milliliter uh, samples. In each of our dye baths, I have eight cups of plain tap water, and I am going to add 
our navy dye. The tap water in these basins is currently cool. And I'm gonna add an additional approximately 500 milliliters of plain tap water to each of these containers, approximately, um, because then that lets me rinse these out. Now, the total volume here is not very important. What is important is the total amount of dye that we have in each of these containers because we are planning to dye the yarn until all the dye is exhausted. And I have squeezed out most of the liquid. And now I am coming in and treating the yarn the same as much as possible. I don't mind if we end up with tonal variation in the yarn, but I do want to be able to compare, this is the yarn with the naps right here, to our stroll. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just trying to treat things as similarly as I can. Now we do need to add acid so the color will set. So I'm gonna add one, then two, and three tablespoons of white vinegar to each. And where is our zip tie? Here we go. And now I'm gonna stir it up by raising and lowering the yarn. Uh, since things are fairly cool still, some color may start striking, but most of it won't until we apply heat. So now I'm gonna bring these pots over to my stove where I will bring up the dye math until we are just below a simmer. So we'll see a little bit of bubbles, but then we'll reduce the heat to low and keep it at that temperature for at least 30 minutes or until the dye bath is clear. Here's the other pot. The total time will be more than 30 minutes just because we do need to bring them up to temperature. And so the amount of time may vary between the two different pots. But I don't think that that is a very big deal. Depth of shade is the number of grams of dye per 100 grams of fiber. So in our case today, we have a 1.5% depth of shade. We have one and a half grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And that is because we started with a 1% stock solution and we measured out a total of 300 milliliters of that stock, which would be three grams of dye. I am not concerned if one pot takes longer for the color to absorb than the other. There are differences in the fiber content in our yarn, but also what we want to compare here is what the one and a half percent depth of shade, which is again, one and a half grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. We want to compare how that feels different between the two yarn bases. Does a one and a half percent depth of shade look darker on the stroll than the white neps yarn? Or do they look fairly equivalent, just one has some little white flecks? And so that is the question that we're investigating. Because a depth of shade is not an absolute definition of a color. If you look at a 2% depth of shade of a black dye versus a 2% depth of shade of a gray dye, the gray is going to be a lot lighter because it's pre-mixed so that at a 1% you get a gray versus a black. Uh, and so ultimately when you are looking at a depth of shade of a color, you're really comparing the color to itself. And typically you're doing that comparison on one yarn base because that depth of color that you see with your eyes can vary based on the fiber type. And so we might not see a difference today, but my hypothesis is that we will because in some of the projects I've done with this white net base in the past, things have looked a little bit more muted than what I expected. And I haven't had something really to compare that to. So that is why I wanted to do this today. So back to my previous point that the volume of water and the time aren't very important. What is important is the total amount of dye that we're adding onto each skein. And as long as we absorb all of that dye onto the yarn, we have the same depth of shade on each of the skeins. So if one of them had eight cups of water like we set up and the other had 32 cups of water, 
There might be differences in the amount of tonal variation in each skein, but ultimately each of them would have the same depth of shade because we added the same amount of dye. What changing your water volume does is changes the rate that the dye will apply to the yarn. It doesn't change the total amount of dye the yarn is able to absorb, at least when it comes to something like acid dyes. When it comes to something like fiber reactive dyes, there your water volume does make more of a difference because fiber reactive dyes, when you're dyeing say like t-shirts and stuff, fiber reactive dyes can start to react with water. So if you dilute those dyes more, then uh, you, will, you won't absorb all of it to the garment and so you will see a lighter color overall. Um, at least that is what I've experienced since the dyes don't exhaust completely in the way we see with acid dyes. So I hope that this helps uh, make sense. I am trying to keep conditions as similar as possible, but if one of them absorbs faster, like the, if the navy absorbs faster on one skein than the other, that isn't going to change like the the final results when we're comparing how the yarn looks by eye. Oh, but one other thing I should mention is that with a lot of different yarn, some types of yarn look way, way more pigmented when they're wet than they do when they are dry. And some very clear examples of this are cotton yarn, um, acrylic yarn, um, especially and especially like wool acrylic blends because I think that cotton and acrylics become a little bit translucent almost when wet, and so the white opaqueness isn't as visible when they're wet, and then when they're dry, things look way, way, way more muted. Check out Dye Pot Weekly 35, I know, going way far back, <laughs> for a comparison of a side-by-side -side of a wool blend and a wool acrylic blend with the exact same amount of dye and how different they look in the end. But anyway, now I just have to wait for the heat from the stove to do its thing. All right, it's been a little over 30 minutes. And besides some random yellowy colors, the dye bath has cleared. So in this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, this is the yarn with our white neps, which uh, you can't see very well yet, but I imagine, oh, it's steamy, things will rinse out, but I am going to turn off the heat and let this cool off completely. I'm curious if on the stroll, I'm not really seeing that yellowish color. I wonder if that has something to do with the neps themselves, but I am still going to add about two tablespoons of white vinegar to this one as well. Turn off the heat and let them cool completely so we can wash the fiber. But don't worry, we'll check in on the color of the water with our white naps. I want to wash the yarn all together and it looks like with our naps, the water is looking really, really clear to me now. So I don't know what the yellowish pigment was for our stroll. Uh, the water looks about the same, so that's great. Now, I would say right now, I think that you can see a bit on camera, maybe, but right now it feels like the stroll is a little bit more blue and the white nep yarn almost feels a little bit black, at least in that area. Yeah, so I would say right now, the way things stand, the stroll feels less pigmented. Um, so I'm curious to see if this di feels different once we dry the yarn. I'm now going to add a little bit of some dish soap. Normally I probably wouldn't expect any bleeding, but if the white nets have sort of soaked in some dye that didn't that then go and dissolve on the yarn, we could potentially see a hint of something. But I honestly, yeah. So I'm seeing a tiny bit of some bleeding. I don't remember if I normally see any bleeding with navy or not. But uh, let's 
see what the rest, next rinse does. All right, let's see. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Sometimes there might be a little that comes out on one of the early rinses and then pretty quickly things transition to being clear. But I do wanna go ahead and rinse this a few times. You can see that the white naps are starting to pop a little more. They still look like a little bit uh, saturated, but um, I'm gonna rinse this a few more times and I'm gonna put all the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we will compare the finished color. Out of the spin dryer and already there is a difference and we're a bit blown out, so I think that that sort of amplifies it, but our stroll is now looking, it's still looking more blue, this is looking almost more black, but it is looking more saturated and pigmented than our uh, Donegal, Donegal blend. So uh, I think that, yeah, I'm excited to see if this will look even lighter once things dry completely. Well, 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 I would say we have a definitive result now. If we look at the exact same depth of shade, on the yarn with white naps and yarn without any naps with that's just wool nylon, superwash wool nylon. The color is way more intense looking. This navy is way more intense looking on the stroll. And it looks almost more like a blue gray, a charcoal gray on this yarn with the white naps that are a cotton acrylic blend. Uh, and I think like one of my favorite things about this video is how much darker this one looked when it was really wet, but as soon as it dried, the color became a lot more muted. And I think that this really explains why when I was doing the ce a celebration colorway on this base, I was confused because I thought the color was a lot more saturated, but it was more saturated when it was wet and just, it dries lighter. Now, as for the neps themselves, they are not white. Uh, the neps are, I would say, sort of like a pastel, also blue-gray. They definitely have some pigment to them, and so the contrast is not quite as severe as maybe you would hope, but that contrast is still present. And if you look closely at the yarn itself, you can see that it is heathered. You can see that the strands going through have picked up the pigments differently in a way you don't really see with the stroll, which is now totally blown out. <laughs> the only other thing I really want to add about this yarn with white neps is that the neps shed. <laughs> when I was twisting up the stroll, I saw little, little bitty specks on it uh, because where the cotton, just some of it does fall out at times but it doesn't all disappear or anything. And that's just something to be aware of. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you're subscribed and make sure those notifications are on so you never miss a new video. And if you love the yarn that I dye and want to bring some home, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. In addition to hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn that have been featured in my videos, I also have some fun samplers and events and mystery op options occasionally. For example, right now you can still pre-order the 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah samplers, which will include a wrapped mini skein that you can open up each night of Hanukkah while watching a new Chemnitz video. It's so much fun and you can find a link down below in the video description. I have a couple more skeins of this yarn left. Are there any techniques that you would like to see me try with it? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, right now, I am trying to think. I think I do wish that the white naps were more white, that they didn't take on a little bit of staining. Uh, I'm sure that that would be really, really difficult to do. Um, I'm glad there is still contrast there, but Oh, I would love to be able to get like sharp white speckles. That would be incredible. Um, not to like discount what this yarn can do. It is a really, really fun yarn. It's just if your expectation is bright stars on a dark night, it doesn't quite hit there. It's more like hints of stars through a haze of clouds on a dark night, which is still beautiful. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.